Right, we are back. So, many of you have seen my previous videos. I'm sure you have. If you haven't, check them out in the gemstone list, playlist, where I've used these nail powders. Now, I had a couple of questions regarding interference powders. Will they do the same? Now, I had a little test run a moment ago, and I'm actually quite amazed. <laughs> but what I also want to do I'm not sure if you're all going to agree on this, <laughs> but I'm going to try a, a kind of matte stone effect. So it's like a um, natural unpolished gemstone using those interference powders. I've just had a go and I'll tell you what, I actually really, really like it. But let me know what you think in the comments. But we're going to try each one of these powders. There are six in the kit. You can see I've made a mess already. I have opened one and tried them. But we're going to give all six a try. Um, we're going to try a few different settings to see what they look like. Again, as shown in previous videos, you can do this with two-part epoxy. But I'm using UV resin for mine. Just because I've got six to test, I'm going to test it in different ways. And it's just quicker for me. So these two here, you can see, are quite matte already. They kind of lost their shine. So this is ideal if you've really used your mould and you're looking for something else to use it for uh, without having to kind of glaze your pieces afterwards. But I don't know whether you're going to like it yet. And if it's not matte enough, I'm going to show you just what you can do to make it more natural. So I've left around one millimetre from the top. Now the reason why I wanted to do this is because I was having a little browse through Etsy and I saw a seller selling these pieces that I'm going to show you obviously they were real moonstone for over a hundred and thirty dollars per piece now we can replicate that and sell them at a margin of the cost okay the seller was using gold and silver but we could always source those also for our work but that is a lot of money for a real stone we can replicate it so I'm just going to partially cure these under my lamp park your whatever you want to call it just for about 15 to 20 seconds this will help the interference powder stick to the surface of the resin I haven't tried it any other way but we will try it in this video just to see the difference because the, the results I had were quite interesting doing it this way so let's pick our first color I'm gonna go in with the blue so the same way we apply the nail powders, I'm just going to brush that over the surface of the resin. I'll do both and then we can kind of do a comparison. I know they're both matte anyway, but I'm going to make one more matte than the other. And now I can just cure those fully. And then I've just mixed up a small amount of black mica powder in with my UV resin and I'm just going to back coat the two of these. And then cure for a minute on both sides. My light is so grubby. <laughs> I keep saying this, I should clean it. Or I've even I've got a new one, but there's no point in me changing it um, until it's broken. So we can pop these out now. And I seriously think this is where the money is in resin. If you make smaller pieces, it reminds me of something I read many, many years ago about iron or steel. You can make much more money turning a big lump or ingot of metal into smaller pieces and selling them than what you can bigger. For example, I mean, I don't hate big pyramids. I don't dislike them. But when I look at a big pyramid or something that's really, really large, they're really nice. But my brain sees thousands upon thousands of these little things inside that pyramid with a much bigger profit margin now I'm not going to show you these yet <laughs> I'm going to make up all the colors I'm going to label them so I know which one's which and then I'm going to show you the rest okay I have finished my testing <laughs> and I'm going to show you a few where I've left them in in you know these ones are shiny molds so this is a cufflink blank you can see that flash is just the same as with the nail powders it is really really nice but I'm going to show you something different in a moment 
So as I've shown before, this mold is crazy good for jewelry making. Again, these are such small pieces and they pack an absolute punch. And again, this thing is a must if you have that mold because you can easily, easily measure the cavities in your mold by using this side. And I can then search for that size blank wherever I want. So I know that my pieces are gonna fit inside with shapes like this. I would measure the inside area and search for that blank. Same with the cuff link. You know, if you've got ready-made pieces, you use the other side. So that is gonna be, say 20 mil for my blanks. I mean, something like that would cost less than a dollar in materials, I'd say. I don't know where I got the bezel from. You'd have to search. But it uses such little resin and such little interference powders. Right, so enough waffling. Let's get on with showing you what I did. So we are going to take one of our stones. It's, it's not as matte as I'd hoped. The, the mold's just not dull enough for my liking. So I'm taking a P180 sandpaper. I know, and I'm just gonna circular motions all over the piece and just get rid of all of that shine. You may not like this, I don't know, but I do. And you'll be left with something that looks like this. Now all we need to do you just go over those small areas where the sandpaper has missed. Just give that a clean with some alcohol. So I'm just putting a small amount onto my paper. Take the piece. And then just rub all that dust off. Now I'm going to do this with the others. And then I'm going to show you one by one which colour is which. And which I prefer. What I forgot to say was these ones were done when the UV resin was fully set and I brushed the interference powder on. So I'm gonna show you the ones that I haven't sanded. So this was the blue. This was a gold. It's still matte though, but gives you an idea. This was the green. You can see like a, a texture in there, almost similar to when we've used the frost, frost liquid. This one was pink. See that texture inside? Doesn't look pink. This one was violet. And this one was silver. Okay, so I'm using this setting as an example. You can get these kind of things in necklace form. This is a bracelet. We'll start with the silver. And as always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. It looks like a natural crystal, unpolished. You can spend a bit of time, that is very bright on the camera, that flash. You can spend a bit more time with the sanding and get it perfected. I kind of rushed mine because I had quite a few. But that is really, in my opinion, that is really stunning. We go with the violet. Really nice colour. Really, really bright. I've focused it a bit better now so you can see more of the colour. But it just looks way more, much more natural than before. And this one is the pink. It's another one of my favourites. The flash is absolutely stunning. It looks like the sun. It's really strong. Again, I went a bit patchy with the sanding. You could work your way. You could use a lower... Love a grade sandpaper, I think. But look at that. Absolutely stunning. Now we move on to the green. Almost has a sea glass look to it also. Especially that green. So the answer to the question is, yeah, interference powders work this might not be your cup of tea you don't have to sand it that is entirely up to you 
but I would just take a bit more care with doing it. But to be honest, it would be better if the mold had completely lost its shine. We wouldn't then need to sand it. So this is my favorite, this is the blue. This is a real moonstone effect. I spent a bit more time sanding that one down. But that on somebody's arm would look like a natural moonstone. Now I can't link that sale on that Etsy store for legal reasons. But if you was to by any chance be on Etsy and search for trending Aurora Borealis necklace, Northern Lights necklace, moonstone necklace, you will see that this looks pretty much identical and that was $132 and we've made it four cents. <laughs> right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know which one's your favorite color. Do you like the matte effect or do you prefer it shiny? Let me know in the comments. See you for the next one. Bye for now.